Mostly's Benz is expanding its electric strategy in India, but this time at the entry level end of things with this car, the EQA. As the name suggests, it's an EV version of the GLA crossover and uh, is the smallest and lowest priced electric Mercedes Benz that you can buy in India today. Today, we have the car with us, we will drive it, tell you all about its features, but also tell you how it stacks up against its biggest rival, the BMW iX1, and whether you should go for one over the BMW. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. The EQA will be offered in one fully loaded 250 plus variant. This version is based on the GLA crossover and gets a single electric motor powering the front wheels with a 70.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. It has been launched in India with an introductory price of rupees 66 lakh, undercutting the BMW iX1 by rupees 90,000, but coming in above the Volvo C40 recharge by rupees 3.1 lakh. Like we said, its biggest rival is the BMW iX1 and thus we jump into what the EQA has to offer and let's look at how it stacks up on paper at least when compared to the iX1. In terms of features, both cars are evenly matched up, offering things like dual zone climate control, dual digital displays, connected car technology, wireless phone mirroring, HUD, LED lighting, drive modes with controllable regen, power tailgate and 40s to 20s to 40s split folding rear seats. The big difference between both cars is down to the powertrain. The Mercedes electric motor's output is much lower than that of the iX1, but latter has all-wheel drive. However, the Mercedes has a much bigger range and is front-wheel drive. Finally, you get 8 airbags in the iX1 and 7 in the EQA, but the rest of the safety equipment is evenly matched across both cars. We have of course driven the BMW iX1 recently and the link to the video is in the description below. EQA crossover, as the name suggests, is an electric version of the GLA crossover and thus shares much of its design with that vehicle, but with some subtle and not so subtle design hints that help separate both the cars. One of the major ones that you can see is the fact that it gets a four grill, uh, this being an EV, and the grill has the Mercedes-Benz three-pointed star uh, you know, listed all over. The headlights are slightly different and you get these little blue elements in it to notify that this is an EV. Even the bumper has been redesigned slightly with some chrome inserts in front. In profile, there aren't many changes. In fact, if you take the wheels out of the equation and you put the ice and the EV side by side, you'd be hard pressed to tell which is which. Uh, some of the major highlights include these chrome inserts under the window line and down by the rub rails. And of course, the wheels which are specific to this car, they are AMG line wheels. 19-inch uh, units, but with aero inserts that are again specific to the EQA. The major change at the rear is an interconnected tail lamp that's necessitated the number plate holder moving down. The interconnected tail lamp has now become a signature of the Mercedes-Benz range and uh, really adds to the futuristic appearance of this car. We're here in the front row of the Mercedes-Benz EQA and as you can see, it's a pretty familiar space. It shares a really large amount of its cabin with its high sibling, the GLA, and there are quite a few familiar elements, the likes of which include these dual digital displays, the steering is familiar, the shape of the air vents, the Mercedes-Benz badging above, uh, you know, in front of the front occupant. But because this is the EQA and it's a little different and a little special, you get this rose gold tint in the air vents and in the middle of all four seats, actually. It's a little more prominent in front. The front seats are powered and have a three-step memory function also. The center console is shared. It's a flat space because Mercedes-Benz has been putting its gear selector lever on the side for a while now. Now, as a space to use, you get more than enough you know, uh, room for both front occupants. Uh, knee room, shoulder room, head room, not an issue at all. And that, in a way, is reflected in the fact that this car is aimed at the self-driving buyer, both in the GLA and the EQA. We're here in the second row of the Mercedes-Benz EQA and given that it has the same proportions as the GLA, 
you get the same amount of space inside there is space for two occupants to sit comfortably third one will have a little bit of an issue even though there is space one because you can see that the seat seat base material is slightly different two you also get the air vents protruding and of course the transmission tunnel which is a remnant of the ice design is also here one of the things that uh, i would even say lacking uh, that you will have a major issue with is that the floor is high because you have a battery pack underneath which means that under thigh support is not particularly great and the seats are placed low also which means that you're going to be sitting like this you can see the amount of space here but uh, other than that uh, headroom and shoulder room not an issue at all now in terms of features you get your ac vents uh, seat back storage 1 liter bottle holders in both the door and unlike the gla you do get a center armrest with these pop out cup holders and the rear seat split fold 40 20 40 We have already looked at all the major feature highlights of the Mercedes-Benz EQA when comparing it to the iX1. But here is a recap in case you skip that. You get the EQA as one fully loaded model dubbed the EQA 250 Plus. The feature list has the usual set of luxuries one would expect in this part of the market, but also some neat stuff like modifiable mood lighting, three-pointed star puddle lamps, 360-degree camera, driver assistance systems, gesture control, and augmented reality navigation that includes a system where It reads traffic lights and alerts you when the light turns green. First, let's get the numbers out of the way. It's a 70.5 kilowatt hour battery pack mated to an electric motor producing 187 bhp and 385 Nm and is only available in front wheel drive configuration. The battery pack can be fast charged from 10 to 80% in 35 minutes when connected to a 100 kilowatt hour DC fast charger. The all important range has been certified at 560 km WLTP, which by our estimate should translate to at least 380 to 400 km in the real world. Now, as a car to drive, this EQA feels exactly as what you would expect in a vehicle like this. So let's begin with the ride. The ride is a little bit on the firmer side, but it's compliant. Uh, we were expecting that it would be extra firm due to the uh, weight of the batteries and the fact that you have to compensate for what is uh, easily about 80 to 100 kilos at least over the ice model. But it's compliant. It's taking bumps, potholes, imperfections, uh, you know, without any difficulty and without. displacing people in the car it is still firm but that is mercedes benz finding a balance of riding ride and handling really not an issue the steering is light and easy to use but does respond nicely especially if you have to drive dynamically there are four drive modes the drive modes don't affect the steering they only alter the throttle but it's a nice car to drive it's uh, you know mercedes has managed to find a characteristic in the middle uh, in terms of making it easy to use but also uh, giving you enough feedback that you know where you're going what you're doing and what's happening with the front wheel the drive modes is the exciting bit now uh, this car may be down on power as compared to the iX1 but it's not short of excitement so you get four drive modes comfort eco sport and individual and as the name suggest as you go up the uh, order the response from the throttle becomes sharper in sport mode like right now i'll put it in sport mode if i just gas it it just takes off i mean that's the magic of an electric power train right you're just getting up and going instantly and in eco it's paired down you also get paddle shifters on the car which in an ice model are used to change gears but here it's for regen and you get degrees of regen and uh, the highest degree of regen is called maximum regeneration in which it's almost intrusive it doesn't help stop the car or rather you can say it doesn't bring the car to a complete halt but it's significant in the way that it will uh, you know retard the acceleration of the car and also help to recharge the batteries i mean that's one of the main functions of having controllable regen in a vehicle like this overall mercedes benz has done a nice job we will of course extensively test this vehicle once it comes to the carwale garage and uh, if you want us to look out for anything specific do let us know in the comment section below so we've spent some time with the mercedes benz eqa and we're going to sum up our experience by answering two questions the first is whether you should buy the eqa 
and two, whether you should consider it over the BMW iX1 and vice versa. Let's start with the first question. Working in favor of the EQA is the fact that it's feature loaded. It offers a decent level of comfort, especially in the front seats. The uh, driving experience is pretty decent, especially in the full fat sport mode. It's quite addictive and you get your what pushback in the seat experience. So good fun. Now, working against it is the fact that the rear seat experience is not particularly great. And while the ride is compliant, it does tend to crash out, especially over the more you know, square edge potholes or sharper potholes. Now on to question number two. Should you consider it over the BMW iX1 and vice versa? Now, when you look at the features, both cars are evenly matched, offering very similar levels of comfort as we had evinced in the first section where we have compared both vehicles. Working in favor of the BMW iX1 is the fact that it's a larger car with more space inside. It has all-wheel drive and is a more powerful vehicle, but it has a smaller range when compared to the Mercedes-Benz EQA, something that works in favor of the Mercedes-Benz. Ultimately, it's down to two, two, three things. One of which is the fact that if you want power versus range, and the other is also, uh, you know, which badge you want on your entry-level luxury vehicle. So there you have it, the Mercedes-Benz EQA. What do you think of the car? Do let us know in the comment section below. And also, before we sign off, here's a reminder. Are you enjoying the content of this channel? Then do hit those like, share and subscribe buttons. And also that bell icon to be notified the instant we put out a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.